So today we are looking at uh, Magic Bullet looks, particularly from the Red Giant um, uh, suit. That's the parent. Um, it's Red Giant. It's a large suit that uh, you could pick up each application from. So I'm going to show you my workflow today and how fast it is for me to achieve. Now, for me, I think I can get a clip done in a minute or two, but it might take longer because I'm trying to show you my workflow. I'm picking this frame. I think this best shows uh, everything. Here's what I do. Let's go to the effect mode and uh, I pick up uh, my color grading tool, which is a magic bullet. As you can see, there are many other options here with the package with the suit that I have. There's a lot more I can do, but today we are talking about the magic bullet look. So you might want to drag and drop the effect on the timeline. Then click here to open the effect. Now this is our magic bullet page. Now that's a lot. There's not a lot in final uh, in Magic Bullet. It can help you. It, it's like a lot loader. It's got some built-in lots anyway, but that's a new feature, by the way. But now you can add other lots. So um, if you don't have a lot lot loader, you could include lots from there. But of course, you have to be using Magic Bullet first. Basically, the four items that I use is exposure. I first of all drag my exposure, I drag my um, warm or um, cold feature, it's just like a um, Kelvin adjuster, I drag my um, saturation and contrast, those four. Sometimes I would I pre colorista, which is like an added bonus, but curves and all that, they are dead, you know, you could play around and see what you like. but. These are the four items that I use and it gets me done real fast. So I, I, I could tweak each one. I usually start from, sometimes I, depending on the clip, I start from contrast or exposure. You know, the one that calls my attention the more, I probably want to start from there. So I tweak the contrast a little while looking at the picture. And yeah, you see how it works. You go back and forth between them, increase the brightness, you see how, how it reacts, how the image reacts to what you're doing and then you do accordingly. Basically, it's something that you have to get used to. I try to turn off and turn on uh, the switch to see what I've done for each of the category, exposure, saturation, um, color temperature and contrast. I keep talking turning off and on to see what each of these elements does to the picture and see if I'm making progress or not. Now I toggle with the cool effect. That's where we get our white balance correct. Any white balance that's off, this is where we straighten it. However, if your white balance is set right and you don't have any problems with that, you might as well not uh, make any adjustment on this filter. I'm just trying to move around and try to get the best uh, balance between the uh, cool and warm. Uh, right now I'm adding the uh, um, saturation. Just tweak the settings, we'll go back and forth and it is done. You want it so you know warm. You want it cool. You want it saturated. You want it uh, contrasty. You know, so you just play with the with these those four features, those four uh, windows. I play with them, and I'm done. I mean, it's it's that simple. So it's still the fastest workflow for me. Um. But of course, I use DaVinci when I need to, you know, 
um, break some things further down when I will need to settle down and work on an image and really, really, you know, dissect it. Sometimes I use all three. Sometimes I work halfway here when I'm stuck and I know that it's not going really well. I'm not getting what I want. I, I export it as is and then go continue over Da Vinci. So it's just a good tool to have amidst your other resources. It's just about being flexible and getting your job done and on time and done right. So, and when you're done, you click on that uh, mark, the good mark, and you get back here. You can also turn off the effect here on and off to show. Um, well, I, I have uh, pre previous filters on, so I might want to turn off a lot of them I think the last one will be the correct one so you if you've done a lot of trials prior you need to know which one to turn off all right so but when I turn all off uh, here's the original and um, here's the new uh, graded image I think there's a lot of difference now I just um, <clears throat> let's just double check. I want to go out and go back and see on a full screen. Okay. I think we still need to do a little bit more tweaking. Yeah, we might need to go back in. I think this um, contrast, we need some more contrast in there. Some more contrast. Add a little bit more to the saturation. I mean, that's, that would be my choice. And... Final, co when your color correction is done, um, one good thing I love about this is the ease for which you could transfer and uh, paste all your correct co color correction settings on the other clips. All the clips on the same scene. You could just copy and paste attributes and just like that they all will take up the new grade and you can easily export so all done in Final Cut Pro um, but as well this application works for Adobe Premiere Pro and then you can always use these same uh, steps so the bottom line is Magic Bullet uh, looks um, I think it's a great feature that you know you should consider using if you want some ease of flow, um, if you want some speed in your workflow. Uh, like once again, uh, the, um, DaVinci Resolve is good, is great. Uh, I use it, but it all depends on the project. So, um, thank you guys for watching. If you did like something in this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, like, and. That's my little tip for today. If you did learn anything, please uh, like this video if you want to see more of this. Um, you might want to comment, let me know, point me in the right direction of your interest and I will do what I can to um, satisfy your question. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Just make sure you don't get hurt. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys. If you're new to this channel, you might want to subscribe at this point in time. I will appreciate it. Uh, it is free of charge also. We don't charge you. You don't even have to be a member of a subscription body like Patreon or stuff like that. No. Come in, 
and just be a part of the family FOC. And then you, you get a chance to win stuff like if you're into film and videography and stuff like that. We're giving away stuff, two items soon. As soon as I hit the 2000 mark, we'll be giving away two items, two for 2000, 1000, we gave out one, 2002. Hopefully I can continue the trend. What I'm trying to say is please subscribe to the channel to be a part of that and to get watch some of our videos coming up that you might just be interested in. Here we do music, movies, tech reviews and short films and stuff like that. If you love to watch movies or you love to produce movies, then this is a good channel for you.